Hello. Yon, yon, yon. <laughs> Episode 19. Yan. So, back Maraming naman. Nangyari. I know, man. How was your holidays? Uh, tatrabaho pa rin. Wala namang holiday-holiday pag sa content. Talagang araw-araw. Uh, gumagawa pa rin ng, ano, ng videos pa rin. So, yun ba rin? Ikaw? Iba talaga pag ano, ha, vlogger. Ilan pa per day ang ano mo, Mark? Parang 6-7 minsan na bibilang oh, ko. 6 videos, 7 videos. Sayang eh. Sayang eh. Sayang yeah, daming content. So, hmm. kamusta ka, Mark? How are you holding up? Busy-busy yata kayo sa camp oh, niya. Oo, busy-busy ngayon. Uh, nung, di ba, nagsimula kami sa Batangas, tapos sa Tarila. Right. Tapos last week sa Pampanga. And hindi na ako sumama sa Nueva Vizcaya. So, This week, meron na kami Pero, malayo. Pero Cebu malayo next, din. no? Cebu next, di ba? Uh, um, sa, tapos, pasunod-sunod-sunod na eh. So, lalo pa pag campaign period. So, ayun, enjoy naman, enjoy oh. naman. Pero nakakapagod na. Ikaw, kamusta? Okay naman, ba- bumabalik ako sa academic works ko. <laughs> Finally, my time na ako. <laughs> may low time ako. So, I can try yung mga long academic works. Pero, uh, soon, hope- uh, hopefully, balik na naman tayo into, the, into action. Kasi, upcoming yung issue ng uh, replacement and issue ng qualifications or disqualifications for that matter. Di ba, Mark? I think yung Ayun, mainit na issue over the past week. Ngayon. Oh, yeah, so I, we know one pers- person in particular has been singled out by a number of legal experts, critics, and others na pwede ba siya tumakbo? Kasi mukhang itong tao na to ay may kaso, no? Uh, sino, sino ba yan? <laughs> <laughs> si ito ba yung ito ba yung tinatawag nilang si Marcos Jr.? Yun ba yun? Yan! <laughs> Yan! Uh, hindi si BBM, si Marcus tayo. Jr. Ayun, so... Marcus. Yun, merong disqualification case na... So, anong alam uh, mo dyan? Anong alam mo sa disqualification case? How, dahil, o, ano yung mga discussions online, bro? Pakisabi, pakishare nga sa atin. Yun, dahil daw ito doon sa 1995 na tax evasion case uh, kay right. Bongbong Marcos na uh, he evaded taxes while he was uh, governor of Ilocos Norte. So that was right. a few years before people power. So I think that three or four years yon, hindi daw siya nagbayad ng uh, buwis. Tapos he was con- baby daw siya, 'di ba? Baby daw si Bongbong, governor uh, baby, baby governor bang meron. Willie Rivilla me. Medyo. Ah, eh ano na, he was he was already governor noon. Oh, Milo. Okay, emphasize Ma- yan ha it. kasi sinasabi ni iba, baby pa daw sila noon eh. Ay pala, medyo mataas-taas ang position pala ni Kuya. So, oh. uh, ano pala, hindi na siya junior na junior. He was, medyo, he was governor ano at that time. So, meron daw right. conviction nung uh, 1995. Tapos, pero na-push nang na-push. So, uh, he was convicted. Three years daw dapat makukulong. Pero ang nangyari, uh, sa Court of Appeals, natalo pa din. Hindi na nila, right. hindi na nila inusog sa Supreme Court. Uh, pinabayaran na lang yata yung penalty o yung fee. Pero right. walang, walang jail time. So ito ngayon yung ginagamit dahil daw dun sa Omnibus Election Code daw. Eh, uh, hmm. Pawal daw pag ikaw ay isang uh, convicted of a crime uh, with right. more than 18 months. Eh. I think yun yung nakalagay. Right. Pas 18 yeah. months. And moral, ano yan? Moral, uh, what's the word they use? Parang moral turpitude? Parang ganun? Right, Or, turpitude. Yes, correct. Yun, yun turpitude. Yes. Oh. Right. So, yeah. kapag daw kapag daw merong ganun, mm-hmm. eh hindi ka daw pwedeng tumakbo for public office. Right, right. So, ang alam ko dito sa case na yan is actually this concerns tax payments ni Marcos from 1982 to 1985, no? Uh so may mga criminal cases na na file sa kanya. Uh si Marcos Jr. of course mahilig sila dito, nag-appeal sila sa Court of Appeals, no? Uh but in 1997, na affirm yung decision of the trial court, no? with some modification nangyari so hindi na drop yung case no so ang ayon sa court of appeals ito 1997 ito the court of appeals rendered a decision finding marcos junior guilty beyond reasonable doubt of violation of section 45 of nirc for failure to file income tax returns for the taxable years 1982 to 1985 in criminal cases numbers and blah 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 so here Ito, ah, final na yan. Ah. Actually, finalist na yan. So, guilty beyond reasonable doubt. So, ito po yung sinabi ng Court of Appeals after nag-complain sila uh, doon sa kaso nila. But, this is where, Mark, things get interesting. And this is why, Mark, when you say, bakit lumalakas ang pro-martial law? Bakit lumalakas yung mga anti-Aquino? Eh, ito ang problema natin. Yung mga ka- ating mga courts, they're not doing their job. So, despite finding Marcos Jr. guilty no, of failure to file his income tax returns, 
uh, ukol dun sa uh, yung position niya in government from 1982 to 1985, yung Court of Appeals imposed on Marcos Jr. only a fine without any imprisonment. No? Although, clear mandatory requirements sa ilalim ng tax code na hindi lang dapat fine, dapat may imprisonment din. No? So I think three years dapat yung something like that, no? yung nakita natin sa early. So in short, parang Court of Appeals says, guilty ka pa rin, pero hindi na kailangan makulong ka. No? Which raises its own question. Kamusta ang mga court systems natin? How credible they are? How independent they are? So ito yung story ng... It's, essentially, ito yung story ng Pilipinas since the end of Marcos regime. Constant failure of our judicial institutions to uphold justice and hold people accountable. Now, ito interesting ito, uh, ano ha, Marka, let me say this. Because parati sinisabi, the guilt of the father is not the guilt of the son, or the sins of the father is not the sins of the son. But interestingly, Marcos wanted to claim $658 million Swiss account ng tatay niya, which of course has been classified as ill-gotten wealth. Wealth. Yung korte sa Switzerland, sabi na ibalik ito sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas, but yung korte dito sa Pilipinas sided with the Marcoses. So, you know, this is the issue, Mark. This is the issue. We keep on talking about the Aquinos, the Congress, the failures of our leaders, the shortcomings. But let's not forget, one reason na napakasikat si Pangulo Duterte noong 2016 nung sanabi niya, you know, kumbaga, essentially extrajudicial yung, yung solution niya sa problema is because yung judicial institutions, judicial. yung Imbagal normal talaga. procedures, hindi gumagaan or worse than mabagal. Di ba, Mark? Medyo nagsaside with the rich and the powerful. Ito po yung pera, problema. Pera. We're not, We're not saying all courts are bad, but unfortunately, many, many big fish no, ay hindi na uphold yung justice in their cases. No? So in many ways, ito yung sinasabi ko, Mark, na we're paying the price for the failures of our judicial institutions also. Hindi lang sila, but they're definitely, they have been part of the problem uh, throughout the years. Now, nonetheless, hindi siya nakulong, baka hindi ito maging grounds for disqualification. Uh, ikaw, Mark, anong, anong, anong say mo dyan? So I, I, I went specifically dun sa details kasi alam ko may mga friends, haters tayo dyan, no? want to play, ano. Uh, so we're, we're trying to get the details very exact here. No? You were saying, Mark, anong take mo dito sa issue ng courts and judicial systems? Oh, ma- mahirap din talagang, uh, kasi y- dun sa una, dun sa unang, uh, dun sa, sa trial court na una, di ba three years daw dapat, as pagdating right. sa Court of Appeals, wala na. So ano yung susundin doon pagdating dito sa COMELEC? So yun ang... Yun ang uh, Which ang, marks? Mm, yeah, you were saying. Please, ang please. magdidesisyon, of course, yung COMELEC. So, ang right. tanong, si, sino ba yung mga nasa COMELEC ngayon? Sino, right. diba? Parang siyempre doon papasok yung issue na uh, siyempre ayaw natin silang uh, akusahan ng any bias or any ano. Pero siyempre... Yeah. Uh, usap-usapan dyan na sino ba nag-appoint dito, sino ba nag-ano dito, right. takasaan ba dito, ilan right. ba yung gan- ilan ba yung taga-comelec na taga nitong lugar. So, doon tuloy papasok yung issue na yan kung, kung how far are they willing to take this case and kung, right. kung uh, seryoso ba talaga sila na i-disqualify. Of course, tinitira din ngayon yung uh, kasi ang pinapasabi, ito daw ay uh, isang move daw ng kampo nila Lenny para daw subukan i-disqualify si si uh, Marcos Jr. Kasi leading so, siya. Oh, kasi leading siya. Uh, and right. Malakas siya sa m- mga surveys daw. So, surveys. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Pero yung, yung uh, I think, yung, yung, nag, yung abogado na nag-file nito, ta- tama ba si, right. uh, uh, who's the lawyer ba behind this? Parang har- si Harvey. Disqualification case oh. against ano, Marcos. You know, I won't be surprised hindi lang one camp. There'll be multiple camps going behind it. Remember yung nangyari kay Graceful? Hindi oh, lang camp ni... Everyone one will camp. Be... There were multiple camps. Remember nung nangyari sa kanya? I could easily say two or three camps were behind that. No, At least two camps. The other two presidential camps. We, we don't need to name names. But I know these people, right? Um, yung isa pa nga, I'm not even sure anong camp niya. Pero former colleague ko na hindi naman lawyer <laughs> nakisali doon sa Supreme Court case kay Graceful. So... Uh, but the other lawyers, I mean, the real lawyers, I, I know also them. Uh, and so I'm mean, kind of familiar. So, you know, honestly, since it's a problem, Mark, no, kung early leader ka, oh, ah, everyone ka is going against him. Eh. Oh, you're, the grass, eh. you're the mm. tallest grass. You're the tallest grass. Ang ang tanong so, na lang ajan is, eh, kung saan ba pupuesto itong sila Duterte? Uh, have you heard yung ano yung ginatina pag usapan pa yung plan C? Did you read about that? Yung kay uh, yung article ni Montulfo. Pag si Duterte, plan Z pa yan. 
That guy has no plan A lang. That guy has A, B, C, D, Z. Oh, ano yung oh. plan C? <laughs> Lord, so, okay. uh, you haven't re- read it pa. So, ang plan A, um, Bongo and, No, no. Bongo and Digong. That was plan right. A. Of course, yeah. That was oh. the super plan. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was and the democracy. Putin and ano, diba, parang ganun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Medvedev. Yeah, yeah. That, was, of course. Yeah. that was the very... So, yeah. that didn't work out. Uh, plan yeah. D is Sarah and Bongo. Of course. Kaso umayaw si Sarah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sarah, Kasi lumakas lalo si Bongbong. Oo, oh, Sarah uh, ran away. <laughs> so, yeah. yun yung plan D. Run, run away. At, at according ito dun sa article. Ano? Yan, bato? Bato Bongo? Bato no. Bongbong? No, no. So, ang plan C daw, according sa article ni uh, Montulfo, yung kuya, hmm. uh, they will ally na. No choice na sila. Susuko na sila. They will uh, become allies na with Bongbong. Of course. Tapos, and Bongo. VP si Bongo and yes. Senate President si Digong. And kung makikita mo yung mga moves mm. na yun, yung mga lumalabas sa news na yun, merong, merong calls like from Kusi, from Bato, na Correct. mag-senador ka na President Duterte. Yes, ako, nakita ko yung kay Kusi. Yeah, and, and someone from social media, I always follow uh, sponsored posts. So sa social media, yun ang, that's how you get clues. Follow the money. Right. Saan merong sponsored right. post. At right. ang nakikita ko na sp- sponsored uh, post ngayon ay uh, Bongo as Vice President. Di ba yung, yung right. sitate? Yung di ba, sitigong, actually, Marcos himself said that. Di ba, Mark like Bong 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 to the third power? Something like that. Like, he, he, bong he is, Bong Bong yeah. Bong. <laughs> bong to the third power. Bong to the third yeah. power. Yeah. He is extending niya, his hand. Marcos, eh. He he's extending his hand sa mga Duterte para hindi na siya kalabanin. So napa, napaka-brilliant ng ng strategy ni Bongbong na intentionally hindi siya naglagay ng VP para to, to at make Senate. It, right. at Senate to make it yes. look like he is extending na right. his hand to Duterte. Pero kung ayaw nyo, I am open sa ibang options. So, right, diba, right. dun yung options na baka daw si Pacquiao. There's that right. option of uh, Governor Gwen. Baka si Governor Gwen, baka... baka yeah, nag, baka si Gwen is still in the conversation for yeah. one reason or the other. Obviously, yeah, siya yung nag-host kasi, ng weekend meeting. Eh. Yeah. Yes, yung, yung kanyang social media, eh, parang national pa rin ang positioning, yung probinsyana. Of course. Diba? If you're of just course. running for Cebu, Cebu Governor... Why? Hindi ganun ang tagline yeah. mo na probinsyano kasi lahat kayo probinsyano eh. Probinsyano eh. <laughs> <laughs> diba? Correct, your, correct. Your tagline. So, possibly correct. din yung si, si Governor uh, Gwen. So, social nga yung mga taga Cebu eh. Social, oh, social nga. Tapos, mga probinsyano pa sila. Isus. Ayun. Ayun. <laughs> pero, 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 ayun nga. So, ang, ang point, uh, Bongbong needs someone from Vismin. Kasi right. doon siya pinakamahina. So, yun. Yun ang... Ang tanong lang kung Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Kung, kung will he survive yung barrage ng attacks na that will uh, it's coming his way from all all sides. So, so yun ang Ano mangyayari kay Bato? <laughs> si Bato. Yeah, nothing to lose naman si Bato. So pwedeng nandoon lang siya as <laughs> ano as uh, as na? parang props. Parang ano, uh insurance wingman, policy wing, parang ganun wing, or <laughs> wingman or I'm not sure. It's... <laughs> Insurance, insurance, insurance kasi insurance hindi no, naman yun makakasin eh. <laughs> or, Para or, ano siya eh. Or figurine. Pang, ano? Figurine. Alam mo yung lalagay mong ano. <laughs> pang, 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 distra- pang, ang distract din or pang, may, may gamit din yun eh. Di ba? Pag meron Uy, din, 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 din defend na. niya nga si Marcos, di ba? Yun, Sabi niya, yun. Yun. Si Mar- so wingman talaga siya doon. Parang ano yun eh. Robin siya. Siya yung Robin. Na hey, ba- sa back up, back up din kasi kasi hindi natin masabi oh, what if just what in if, case just in case something the bad the happens so, to bongbong yeah oh so yeah. so, na, so hindi lang plan C sabay-sabay yung plan C and plan D and plan E kumpara oh, plan D de la rosa yung <laughs> 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 plan D tama yan tama yan tama oh si bato oh. yung pala yung plan D ko no choice tayo pilitin na lang natin to si bato I always said, the Bongbong Marcus will position himself as the top choice and then he's open to team up for the lower choices. Kumbaga, unified team, but on Marcus terms. Kumbaga, andun pa rin yung alliance. Ang, nasa taas ngayon naman ang Marcus. Dati yeah, sa baliktad. Oh. So, timing. But but things also fell into uh, the right place, di ba? Tapos ang yabang-gayabang kasi yung Duterte-Duterte tandem. Nagdrama-drama sila. May Bongo Sara. They didn't take Wala. care of the Marcoses, eh. Exactly. Really, the Marcoses were just waiting for their entry time. 
boom. So yun. Uh, so if 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 Sarah was preparing to run for the past few months, Bongbong was preparing to run since 1991. <laughs> so so lang. Just preparation time lang. Medyo talo na kayo dyan, di ba? So so I I am not surprised at all. But nga, um which but going back to this issue no kasi yung isang isang malaking issue ngayon with Comelec is yung Dennis Uy group daw, di ba? Uh, yung affiliated F2 kay Dennis Logistics. Uy. F2 Logistics na mag uh, handle ng uh, at least some aspects of the automated elections. Again, I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to be expert kasi complicated yung processes uh, when it comes to automated elections. Dati nga, nakausap ko yung mga dating in charge of automated elections. I just realized it's, it's not as simple as that. But, kasi ito yung, ito yung point ko kasi alam, uh, o, o, officially, top donor si Dennis Uy, di ba? Dun sa campaign ni Duterte. Uh, so, identified talaga siya with President Duterte's side. So, you know, whatever they, they want to say. Uh, pangalawa, ang problema natin is since the introduction of automated elections, naalala mo ba yung first, first time nag-automated tayo? Kasi nabutan natin yung mga manual time pa, di ba? Diyos ko, yung 2004 ba yun? Yung manual? Oh. I mean, yung kay FPG yung at saka Arroyo. Hindi natin narinig masyado yung dagdag bawas eh. Yung... Yun, yung mga ganun, di ba? Yung talagang <laughs> okay. grabe yun, di ba? Yung mawala ng electricity, oh. habang nagbibilang daw yung mga tao sa I don't know, somewhere in the Philippines. So we moved gradually to automated, fully automated, no? Uh, although, meron ka pa rin, you know, backup for canvassing, di ba? Kung sakaling may problema. Kaya yun ang ginawa ni Marcos, except he lost even more votes in the contest siya, di ba? <laughs> um, so we already have these issues, yung seven-hour glitch daw, hocus pocus. So, akin lang kasi, Mark, is like, you already have a shadow of doubt, no? Over itong automated elections, hocus pocus issue. Um, I'm not sure this was the smartest choice. Wala na bang ibang tao? Kailangan ba yung Duterte campaign donor affiliated company ba talaga mag You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, and to be honest, Mark, I don't know anong alam mo kay Dennis Uy. I'm sure he was a great businessman in Davao, but I'm not sure Dennis Uy was like one of the top businessmen in the country or the world na expertise in telecommunications and logistics like automated. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure that's really his background. So, Ang akin lang, uh, Mark, that's going to create, that's going to raise not only eyebrows, but seriously, I'm, I'm telling you, Mark, I'm getting more and more um, requests and webinars about election cheating or post-election violence, etc. So many people, by the way, these are coming from big business from abroad. Huh? They're in giving invitation. They're inviting also professors, experts from abroad who are experts in this issue, no? yung mga mambo-jumbo sa automated election. So, honestly, hindi good vibes ang nangyari dito. And, and the fact that um, a lot of Comelec people, I think si Guazon lang yung hindi, ano, di ba? Hindi Duterte appointee. Um, I'm not sure this is very helpful. And then meron kang James Jimenez, uh, now one of the few consistently neutral person. And then ngayon parang tinitwisting words niya ng one camp against the other. So, I don't know. I think Comelec is really under pressure so they have to prove that they're really independent, right? To prove that talaga yung mandate nila, inembody nila sa practices nila. So I'm not very, very encouraged dito sa circumstances around the latest F2 logistics issue. Again, I'm not saying that Dennis Uy wants to do something. I'm not going to say that. We're not stupid. We're not going to make... But I'm just saying there's already a perception problem. So kung may perception problem ka... Isn't it better to err on the side of caution? You, you know, you know, kasi concern ko, Mark. Ikaw, ikaw, Mark. Anong take mo dito sa issue niya? Oh nga, eh, nga. Eh. Uh, and eh, hindi lang yun, hindi lang sa logistics side, maski yung sa yung sa suse or yung don sa uh, software code? mismo. Code, code yeah, mismo yung mga code, yeah. Diba? That's my transmission part pa. Rumors na lumalabas about kung sino yung may control and all that. And uh, kaya dun nga yung sumasabi na whoever wins kailangan uh, malaki yung lamang para hindi mamagic yeah. or ano. So, yan. Eh, what can we do? At dito mahalaga yung surveys, di ba, Mark? Kasi kung medyo malayo-layo yung result na final dun sa median ng mga credible surveys, medyo magtataka ka. No? So, so, I think we really need even more credible surveys now because in the past, at least hindi lumalayo yung resulta. No? In fact, Pulse Asia and Fairness to them, they accurately got 2010 and 2016. Very accurately. Even more than SWS, no? So I think that's why very mahalaga itong dalawang uh, survey agencies na they keep that integrity uh, and hopefully the perception of their integrity also stays. Kasi yun nga eh. um, But I, again, I, I know I'm jumping very much ahead, but I, I'm not sure how open you can discuss this, but 
are you guys ready just in case some mumbo jumbo happens? Because, uh, you know, I mean, in other countries, there's protest, there's contestation. Uh, I mean, this is uh, hopefully this is a kind of a D-Day scenario or kind of a worst case scenario, but it's not impossible, right? Um, I think all camps should be ready in the opposition. Uh, and I see Iska's opposition. I mean, he's not administration, obviously, or despite all the blah, blah, blah they say about him. He's still, he's not administration yet. So is the Iska camp ready? All camps should be ready. Lahat yeah. na kailangan maghahanda ng ano, ready sa ganyang scenario kung yeah. sakali. Tsaka volunteers, no? Around yeah. the country. Uh, going back to this issue ng Comelec and all, may controversy din si Lenny uh, over the past week. Doon sa sinabi niya, take the money, oh. but don't vote. Right? <laughs> Ayan, oh, happy ka na. See? Oh. Fair tayo dito. Hindi lang tayo. Let's go to that issue because James Jimenez kind of took a big issue with that. And then the Bongo Marcus people made a mountain out of the molehill, right? So that was like a feast, no? I don't know what the heck were they thinking about in the Lenny camp by saying that in public, no? Maybe you can say that behind the scenes because... It kind of makes sense, right? Sige, ano, kung talagang kailangan mo pera at eh, eto, kurakot naman, kunin mo yung pera pero wag mo siyang botoin. But kasi Mark, itong problema eh. Studies show, no? so I was checking some of the studies, some political science studies show that actually politicos have a way to monitor how the vote comes out. Yeah. So for instance, they monitor your Facebook posts. They monitor, for instance, yung, for instance, kung yung, yung barangay nyo, barangay, binibigyan ka ng pera, oh. at di kayo bumoto, talo yung kandidato na yan sa ano, Baba, babalikan kayo. Babalikan. Babalikan kayo. So for the sake of avoiding a uh, problem, any headache, pag kinuha yung pera, lalo second round, no? might as well go with them. Kasi ganun yung problema. Kasi I, I also realized, kasi Mark, hindi mag-work yung argument na pamoral na don't get the oh. money. It doesn't work. People are people need money. I mean, the desperation is there. Diba? Parang point nila, ito na nga lang chance na yun, mabawi na kami yung money na nakaw, di ba? But at the same time, the problem is... In some cases, kasi sila pa yung nangihingi eh. Parang sila pa yung, yeah, yung right. in a lot of cases. They're expecting Which is understandable, that. Mark. I, oh. I don't agree with it, but it's understandable. Eh, may sakit yung anak mo. Wala kayong makain. Saka wala na uhuli. Kasi exactly. siguro kung may nauhuli, kung may people right. would be more scared to do that, eh wala namang nauhuli. Nakailang election na tayo. Meron Correct. akong ano, meron akong advice dyan. Kasi yes, please. Ano Go ahead. Paganda. I want to take your point on that. And actually, what do you think about Lenny also saying that? Oh, kasi And, uh, sa akin, I don't... I don't bash yun eh. Oh, I don't take too much uh, pero, uh, offense doon sa kanyang sinabi. Na may point din naman nga, pero uh, sa akin, ito yung... Pangit lang yung communications. Oh, pangit lang yung pagka, that in public. Yeah, yeah. Na. Pero maganda oh. na pag-usapan na din. Pero ang sinabi ko sa vlog ko niyan, nung lumabas oh, yan, sabi ko, uh, pag uh, may vote buying, binigyan ka ng pera, kunin mo, tapos... Uh, isumbong mo doon sa kalaban, malay mo, taasan yung bigay. <laughs> <laughs> so, ano yung bidding wars? Bidding, bidding wars. wars. Yeah, Alam ko pero, sa amin, sa Ilocos, ha, nangyari, nag-second round pa yung isang gagawin. Yun, Hindi diba? ko sabihin eh, ko sino. May, may, may logic din sa sinabi ko. Merong, ano dyan, meron, uh, uh, may logic yun sa kung bakit ko sinabi yun. <laughs> bakit mo susumbong doon sa kalaban? Para yung kalaban yung gumawa ng moves na magsumbong. Right, right. Kasi right, kung right. kung hindi kung yung kalaban, kung ikaw mismo, na, kung ikaw yeah. mismo, 'di ba? Anong anong power mo to, ano? Actually, my point ka. Sa... That's a very interesting point. Diba? So, so you kumbaga, you're giving ammunition to the opposition to uphold the law. Oh, to uphold right? the law. It's up to exactly. them na. Not black propaganda, but talagang dodgy, 'di ba? Dodgy oh. business. Inter- that's very interesting. I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, I like it. Like... Diba? Pero... No, but it makes sense. It makes oh. actually very good sense. You place it on them. Hindi sa'yo. Hindi, hindi yeah, you pass action. the burden to them. Pass the exactly. burden to them. Oh. Kung what That's will they do with idea. this knowledge? Dalawa yan. Either oh. isumbong nila sa, com- sa Comelec o yeah. hayaan lang nila or tasa nila. So, right. <laughs> so, Basta, yeah, so, play your options well, right? Yun ang, yun ang sinasabi oh, natin. Yun hindi lang. tayo mga moral effect Uh, again, again. I mean, we're just very realistic about the harsh realities on the ground. But even with harsh realities, because, I mean, Mark, lahat naman ng bansa nagsimula dyan. Panoorin mo yung gangs of New York sa US. Grabe, di ba? Mga gangs na mayor office, purong gang. Yung ano, di ba? So, all of us, even yung mga advanced countries ngayon, dumaan din sa process na yan. So, maybe we can learn something from them. Paano sila umalis sa situation na yan? So, as realistic as... Hanggat right. walang really nahuhuli, me. hanggat walang yes. na, napoprosecute, or hanggat hindi siniseryoso. It, it, right. it comes down ulit dun sa sinasabi mo kanina, Comelec. justice system. Comelec and yes. justice system. Diba? Yes. Kasi 
kung, kung if correct, no one will get yan. convicted so what's the use pa if Right. Diba? Impunity eh. Itong problema talaga natin, Mark, no? impunity sa ating bansa, lalo sa mga mayayaman or drug lord in that case. No? Mm. Ang konti sa kanila ever has been held accountable for anything. I mean, even si Erap, nung na, nakulong siya conviction, pinalaya din siya ni Arroyo over time. Diba? I mean, for political reasons. I mean, Duterte, ilan ang pinalaya niya. Diba? So, so I think uh, one reason I will tell you na Uh, people are becoming more pro martial law I, i i don't agree na pro but more pro authoritarian i'll just use that term more authoritarian tao is because they have lost confidence sa democratic institutions no ability to uphold justice no so kung it takes a strong man to do it maybe palpak si duterte but hopefully another authoritarian will do it yung ganun yung mindset diba kasi wala nang tao wala na silang paniwala hindi na sila believe kaya nga dirty harry justice diba cowboy justice hindi ka maasa diyan sa sheriff kasi yung sheriff eh loko loko eh So doon ka na ano take your justice into your hands vigilante style wild wild west so i think unfortunate yung problema so ang laki ng problema ng mga judicial system natin ang dami nating abogado pero ang konting hustisya ay gusto ko yung ano ang gandang ano yan daming abogado ang konting hustisya maganda yan ah maganda yan isulat natin so, <laughs> pwede ko so, pwede yun, yun talaga ang ano yun talaga ang kailangan ayusin kaso kaso ang mag-aayos din yung yung uh, it comes from the top then yung presidente din right. kasi sino yung i-appoint sa DOJ pero kung walang right. kung walang incentive sa presidente na ayusin kasi it benefits him and his friends so paano mm. naman yun di ba so it's an end, a never ending cycle yes diba? unless of course we get a good president who really uh, pushes for some changes to appointment my scrutiny so for instance uh, sa US for instance again not a perfect oh. system but in the US pag nag-appoint ka ng isang justice sa Supreme Court, dapat dadaan nito sa Senado. So dapat ma-approve din ng Senado para ng commission uh, you know, uh, appointments, no? So for instance, sa atin walang ganoon eh. Yung Supreme Court halos diretso na, di ba? Dadaan lang sa whatever whatever, pa diretso na. So walang scrutiny ng ibang branches, pero, no? Pero Supreme Court ba ang mag-aayos nung sa justice system natin or sa DOJ din? DOJ din eh. Uh, may checks and balance tayo, di ba? So the executive can do it through the DOJ. The legislative can also do it through scrutiny. The same way na my judicial review. Now the Supreme Court can also check kung may abuse yung executive. Kaya nga yung principles of checks and balances. No branch of the state is supreme on its own terms. It can check and be balanced by other branches of the state. I think separation of powers sa system natin na nakuha natin sa mga Amerikano. No? So I think goes back to the works of Montesquieu among others. So yun yung, yun yung principle uh, ruling the Philippines. But yun nga, another thing I will tell you... Um, Mark is remember yung issue ng election interference malaking issue yan sa US yung Russia interference sa Taiwan China interference so dito sa Pilipinas tinanong ko actually si James Jimenez pero niya mahanap uh, pero niya hanapin yan sa YouTube interview namin uh, I did it with GMA uh, the other year before pandemic tinanong ko sa kanya uh, James meron ba tayong ano uh, batas laban sa uh, uh, foreign financing No, yung yung pera na galing abroad na pupunta sa ibang kandidato to serve the interests of foreign powers or foreign actors or businessmen. Apparently, parang wala. Mark, yeah. Wala tayong batas. Wala tayong foreign financing, wala tayong election interference legislation. So, ano si very pero, reckless. Pero, pero, pero the thing is, uh, hindi din naman makikita eh. Even if merong batas, eh, hindi din naman nag-declare mm. ng financing yung mga, mga kandidato eh. So, Ne, kaya nga, uh, dapat meron kang mga mechanisms. Election, so, electoral reform. May, may FBI, yeah. kaya may NBI ka. Yung mga, you know what I'm saying? So you can create a commission to actually audit no? at audit monitor. Talaga. Ito yung mga white money and dirty money that gets into elections. So Taiwan has that to make sure na in China hindi niya i-co-op yung mga kanilang politicians. Australia also introduced uh, election financing regulations. US also has that you know, to deal with interference from Russia and others. Uh, Singapore, not a democracy, but Singapore also has regulations, even on social media. No? So kung suspected yung social media mo ay foreign finance or foreign-based na nagpupush ng specific agenda of a specific party, actually pwede ka maban. Or, or that account can be banned or persons behind that account can be held accountable if they're citizens of Singapore or residents of Singapore. So uh, ang term dyan is sharp power. Ito yung ginagamit ng mga other powers to, to in, infiltrate yung system. So yung mga babayaran nila yung mga influencers, bloggers, media. So hindi lang bayaran po yung media, bayaran din yung mga influencers, bayaran din yung mga politiko. Ganun. So yun yung ginagawa nila. 
So unfortunately, since we don't have any specific yeah. mechanism to deal with that, which is like shockingly reckless and irresponsible in my opinion. Para, para We're not naming names, ha? I'm just saying ano, this. Eh. Open secret din yung pag si ganitong bilyonaryo, magbibigay ng ganitong pera kay ganito. Right. Si ganitong politiko, magbibigay ng ganitong pera. Eh, wala eh. Lahat is off the books eh. Hindi right. na mo monitor lahat eh. Right. So eh, what more kung, kung galing sa abroad yung pera? How... How can you say, di ba? Right. Kung yun nga, hindi na mamonitor. You, you don't know where that But even worse, di ba, Mark? Kasi iba yung oligarch, iba yung foreign power, di ba? I mean, it's not like oligarchs want to, I don't know, own West Philippine Sea, right? But the foreign power we know wants to own the West Philippine Sea. So the stakes are even higher, right? So in that sense, not to mention, of course, foreign powers through oligarchs can also do stuff, right? So, so yun nga eh, napaka-toothless ang Comelec. Yan ang problema ko eh. Hindi lang independence yung issue, yung toothlessness din yung issue. So we really have to do something about it. At ewan ko, ikaw Mark, kasi para sa akin weird din na wala tayong runoff election. Parang ano lang, one time, big time, which is, I don't know, weird eh. Um, just because we didn't have big problems in the past doesn't mean that it will not be a problem in the future, diba? Dapat may foresight tayo. Kasi sabihin natin, Lenny Manalo or Marcos, tapos may never on both sides, tapos ang kinuha mo lang vote, 20-30%, 70% hindi bumoto sa'yo. Magkakaproblema ka ganun, diba? I mean, your mandate could be questioned very much, diba? Uh, so, I think, I think in the runoff elections, uh, that is something na, ano, na feasible and pwede nating i-explore yeah, pwede nating subukan sa mga susunod na elections. Uh, right. national advocacy national na lang natin yan. Pwede. pwede. Na pwede. Electoral natin. reforms. Yeah. Sa electoral yes, reforms. electoral reforms. Party reforms, no? Yung real political yeah. parties. Na, hindi lang political dynasty. Ay, isa pa yan. Yan ang mas medyo mahirap na... na... Correct. May, ako, I always say this, ha? I always say this, ha? Yung mga... Yung, kasi nakikita natin yung problema sa parties, yung problema right. sa dynasty, yung problema sa... Lahat ng mga... Yung vote buying, lahat na yan. Pero... It, mga sintomas lang yan eh. It all comes down course, to one root absolutely. problem eh. It, it comes down to one root problem na ang politika sa atin, negosyo, karamihan, right. I'm not saying all, pero karamihan, marami, negosyo. Yun ang trend eh. Yeah. Family yun, oh, business. Yun, family business. Yun, yun, yeah. yun, ang, yun ang problema. Sabi, I'm hmm. not judging. Siyempre, meron dyan magaganda magagawa. Meron dyan may exceptions. magagawa. And then, right. I mean, exceptions I mean, naman, merong yeah. merong merong uh, noble noble family business merong pero family right. business pa rin eh. So so right. yun ang yun ang yun ang mahirap right. baguhin kasi kung para baguhin yan kailangan mong marami kang tatamaan. Marami mm-hmm. kang marami kang Pero marami. tama rin si Lelo, inaalala mo yung sinabi niya na the other thing in the meantime, payamanin natin ang mga Pilipino kasi habang yung mayaman ng mga voters mo, they become more conscious about their choices hindi sila desperado to. You know what I'm saying like yeah, I think yeah. if the Philippines keeps on growing and yung per capita income natin sabi natin mas malapit sa Malaysia which is around $10,000 or Turkey, yung mga, alam, yung mga ganun bansa, feeling ko mas ko konting vote buying kasi mahirap talaga tayong bansa eh. Our per capita income is like $3,000. In comparison, US per capita is like $70,000. Malaysia is about ten thousand dollars, so we're really a poor country. So yun ang point ko eh. Malaki pa rin yung middle class natin. I'm not saying purong poor lang, uh, but the reality is that habang mababa pa yung 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 level ng uh, pag-unlad natin, maging laganap itong problema eh. So if you look at the US, they were in the same situation hundred years ago, nung very poor din ng average Americans, no, hundred years ago. But I think as Americans became rich, lumaki middle class. Hindi mo ma-vote ba yung middle class, di ba? I mean. Kung, ikaw, ikaw, benta yung may vote mo for 4,000? Obviously no, di ba? Feel ko, kahit 50,000, di mo bibenta yun, di ba? So parang, gets mo, iba eh, kasi may pride ka na eh, di ba? Ma-pride ka eh, kasi eh, kumikita naman ako, ba't ko bibenta yun, di ba? So, yun yung, so yung desperation factor ay wala doon, no? I'm not saying just because you're poor, you're, you're, you're this or that. No, I'm just saying the tendency na you'll be willing, amenable to sell your vote oh, will naman. decrease as you rise through the ranks. So feeling ko, ang kailangan talaga natin for the next 20 years, mag-grow lang tayo na economy at slowly, slowly mag-introduce tayo electoral reforms, party reforms, and I think hopefully over time, even if political dynasties, yung mga susunod na henerasyon, kahit paras na pamilya, ay umayos. Tignan mo si Nancy Pinay. Right? Love na love siya ng mga dilawan ngayon. Di ba? Pinay na, tuloy yung tatay na naging na-rehabilitate sa mga dilawan. Di ba? Eh, eh, ito ay se- se- separate na issue din to. Ah, Doon sa sinasabi mo. Totoo yun. This, this problem will take decades to solve. And yung igogrow muna yung economy. Pero kasabay din right. yan yung sa ano eh. Ito naman yung personal ano ko din. Yung sa population growth. Oh yeah. There, Laking, there action needs, malaking issue yan. Yeah. There needs to be a way na 
uh, palakihin yung economy, pabagalin yung growth ng population. Yeah. Kasi, uh, well, yeah. But diba, isn't, isn't that where Aquino and uh, Duterte are on the same page, right? Yung RH bill ni Aquino, sinuport ni Duterte. I mean, this is what people don't discuss. On some issues, actually, magkatugma ang dalawang administration na yan. And I think it's correct. RH bill is about empowering people to make family planning choices because mahalaga naman yan, di ba? Uh, uh, kasi hindi tayo pwede mga sa withdrawal diba, na. Ano, may, may, siguro more more incentives, more... Pero we right. need to... Kailangan pa konti yan eh. Kasi kahit sabihin natin blessing yan, kahit sabihin natin ano yan, yung quality of life ng mga bata yes. nung lumalaki. Eh. Yes. Diba? Yung, yung, right. yung development nila, yung, yung, yung uh, uh, development nila sa schooling, sa, sa, sa right. body. Nutrition. Day, yeah, nutrition. Right. So right. Hindi, hindi natin kaya sa ngayon eh. So... So baka, I mean, we're very overpopulated. I mean, in natin yan, we, we yeah, really even, have even a... If, even if we grow big in the next 10, 20 years, eh, yung population naman natin, sumobrang lobo din. Ganun yeah. din. We're so back yung average to, per capita, mababa pa rin. Mababa yeah. pa rin. So we're back yeah. to where we started. So I think yun yung dagdag din yan. Tama, Mark. That, that's very good to point because Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam, all of have all of them. Indonesia, by the way, is a democracy, no? And Thailand was sometimes democracy, sometimes not. They actually introduced family planning programs, no? So, infertility rates in life is a replacement level, which is two kids per family. So, to replace them, mom and dad, dad. Hindi na yung four, five levels ng Philippines. And ganun. Even Bangladesh, another democracy, has significant decreased their uh, fertility rates, no? To, to replace, more closer to replacement level. Kasi ang mangyari dyan, of course, abang dumadami yung mga bata, ang tawag dyan sa demographics, youth bulge, kawawa yung mga parents. So imagine two parents, matanda na, sinisupport pa rin sampo yung anak, di ba? I mean, what, I mean see, you know, God gives us reason, right? Kaya nga binigyan tayo ng faculties ni Diyos, ng Diyos eh, no? Para mag-isip tayo, mag, mag-plano tayo, no? And if, if may siyensya naman dyan, that you can make right choices and so be it. At saka, aminin natin, the, the tendency is that the poorer the families, the more kids. I'm not sure that's by choice. I don't, I'm not sure that's by design. I'm, 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 I'm very sure it's because wala silang, you know, sapat na edukasyon or sapat na kakayahan, no, para makontrol yung family planning. I mean, yung idea na natural process withdrawal, um, I'm not sure that really works. I mean, just look at the evidence. It doesn't work, right? So, yeah, yun lang. But thank you. Thank you very much. That's, that's a very good point that you raised. So, uh, balik kasi ito eh, relevant ito sa issue natin kasi relevant ito lahat eh, yung Marcos issue and all of that these are all symptoms of, of some fundamental problem in our society diba? kaya nga people do not feel too strong about EDSA democracy and all because kitang kita eh diba? kaya this is where I like the ISCO line no? ayan babash na ako which is <laughs> pragmatic din tayo yung realidad on the ground we can debate the debates we can fight for human rights Pero yung social justice on the ground, huwag natin kalimutan yung everyday challenges. Huwag natin kalimutan. Yung sinabi ni Samira Gotok, yung maganda kay Mayor, your may is, alam niya sinong engineer ang tawagin niya. Kilala niyong plumber, di ba? Mismo ang plumber. Ganun ka-level, no? yung on, hands-on talaga na leadership. no Of course, you cannot do that as a president, but at least it means may alam kang kahit, kahit pa paano dun sa technicalities of, of issues. So now let's go to ISCO. So kamusta ang ISCO camp? Um, what are the developments? Medyo... Tapos na yung medyo yung init, no? medyo may, may hit oh, eh. Medyo, <laughs> first ano, na, na, Pero ngayon na, medyo nag-mellow down. Na. Ngayon, oh, ngayon may, bago na? Ng, ano na, may bagong issue na. Yung paglipat naman ng no, uh, malaking uh, parallel group ni Pacquiao. If not the biggest, I think sila yung pinakamalaki. Yung si MP Nation. Right. Oh, Very led good by point. a certain Colonel Danny Enriquez. Which Can you tell to... us more about this, Mark, please? Can you inform us? Can you give us a background, what's going on, etc.? Yeah. So, si, si Colonel Danny Enriquez happens to be mm-hmm. a good friend din ng tatay ko. So, parati siyang nasa bahay. Interesting. So, Interesting. Five, five months ago, so, mga uh, six months ago, ganun, he's talking na, Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao for President, man. <laughs> MP right. Nation. So, ayun. So, mabait naman tong si Colonel Danny. So MP doon na buo yung MP Nation tapos meron siyang mga sinama doon sa groups. So sila yung pa, uh, parang run sara run, parang ganun sa kay Isko yung IM Pilipinas. So sila yung uh, volunteer group na Ni Pacquiao. Pacquiao tsaka mga sectoral. So meron Correct. sila para sa senior citizen sa ganun sa iba't ibang LGUs, iba't ibang barangay. So itong si Colonel Danny had a falling out with uh, someone uh, doon sa inner circle ni Pacquiao. So, mm. yun. So, ayaw, ayaw din niyang pasabi. Ah, so, so ito yung kwento ng medyo may disintegration daw sa loob ng kampo ni Pacquiao. Ito yung angle. Oo, parang ganun. Parang ganun. Mm. Parang nasasabi din niya na ano eh, na, na, parang may kanya-kanya silang ano doon eh. Kanya-kanyang, 
Paksyon. Na kanyang paksyon eh. Tapos, right. yun, yun uh, hanggang umabot sa point na, uh, yun na, naka, nakaaway na sila and uh, um, umalis sila lahat. <laughs> Tapos, uh, they reached out to Team Orbos, ayon Pilipinas. Uh, yung main naman yun na parallel group ni Pacquiao, eh ni Pacquiao ni Isko. Mm-hmm. Tapos, uh, nag-out na sila last week. Tapos, this this week kanina, galing nakabi doon sa office nila, sa Makati. And right. yung buong office, at pasok mo doon, puro picture ni Pacquiao. So, they, they will be... <laughs> so, <laughs> nag-drop by ka? Ano kami lahat kanina? Yung mga... Interesting. Yung, wow. yung mga parallel groups naman ni, ano, ni Isko. So, it feels weird. Napapasok kayo yeah. doon. Na, weird. Ta- diba? Tapos, nandun yung... May, meron silang mga room, yung mga volunteers. Ito yung, yung mga lugar. Interesting. Mga so, yun yung, yun yung uh, nangyari. So, yung sa part naman ni Pacquiao, bin- binalikan naman nila tong si, ano, si Danny Enriquez. Sinasabi nila na namimera lang daw, ginagamit daw si Pacquiao mm. para umuha ng mga donations. Tapos may sinabi pa na hindi daw totoong colonel, parang ganun. Sinagot naman lahat yan ni Colonel kanina, in-interview ko din. Right. So, yun yung, yun yung buong issue. Tapos, right. uh, I think this week, uh, paglalabas din ng uh, sariling press con yung MP Nation. So, right. yun. It's ano lang, it's uh, big news din, lalo na doon sa dalawang kampo. Kasi, right. Yun. Yeah, I've been hearing some stuff about the Pacquiao camp. Na medyo may may gulo daw, medyo may disintegration and then there are discussions that he might slide down na lang to VP kaya nga the Marcos has made that attempt and then of course he rejected it in fairness to him, my conviction siya. Conviction um, daw. Um, in fairness to Pacquiao, I, you know, uh, sabi nga ni Trilliano, second favorite niya si Pacquiao, di ba? <laughs> um, so if Pacquiao is like the new B9, no? Sobrang biglang ano na. Uh, and in fairness to Pacquiao, ah, di ba yung uh he was firm nung sa stand niya against martial law. Right. Uh, and pagbabayarin daw niya yung mga Marcos. Di ba? So, so, right. Crusade. Diba? Major crusade mode. Yeah. Oh, major crusade so, mode. So, of course. Uh, do you think Pacquiao will go for VP? At this point, parang Slide down? Eh. Wala, ah, wala go all... ng ganun eh. Ang, ang sinasabi ni Colonel Danny, kasi Pacquiao might be listening to, ano eh, parang hindi ganun ka-okay na advice eh. The people around well, him. Eh. So, yun yung... Right. Right. So yun yung you mean what do you mean like uh, ito yung people na go pakyaman go parang ganoon like kaya mo oh, yan like uh, ignoring the reality we're doing good yeah. we're doing ano mamigay ka ng pera yes, ganoon <laughs> so so yes man yes man yeah oh so ang, ang problema yun nga chef uh, sa pagdating sa finances talaga doon ako medyo worried for ah, Pacquiao yeah. Yeah, I feel bad. I mean, I hope he's not going to burn his money. I mean, I hope Jinky oh. will say something or or Tunisia or Someone, you know, who... Or sing Kasi, son, you know, Chavik. It doesn't have a business. Wala, walang negosyo, walang ano. So... Yeah, yung kapital, diba? I mean, it's... Yeah, from boxing lang, eh. Well, tapos na yung career niya. Yeah, so, tapos na. Hindi naman siya mad na nakaw. So, hindi naman siya kikita dun sa gobyerno. You know, so... Kasi, you know, one... I'll just tell you this, okay? One... You know, one angle people are looking at or familiar with the... Because a friend of mine was asking if he could Pacquiao or something like that, you know. So, uh, you know, there's some people are familiar about some discussions. Some were saying that Pacquiao could be de facto VP of either Lenny or, or Isco eventually if he slides down. Not, not de jure. So, de, so the, de, the, the formal one will be Willie, uh, and Doc Willie and, of course, Kiko. But the de facto one, kung surrogate VP, if I could use the term, will be Pacquiao. And should he back either Isco or Lenny, he could be a big help sa Mindanao vote because, especially Isco is very weak in Mindanao, so it makes sense for Isco. But Lenny's on good terms with also Pacquiao, so I won't be surprised. And mukhang Pacquiao, medyo benta na siya sa mga dilawan ngayon dahil uh, that strong yung stance sa mga Marcos is way stronger than Isco. No? Uh, although I understand where Isco is coming from. No, Although I don't agree with the communication style, medyo mahina recently, but hopefully it can be improved. No. Uh, and, and I'm saying not because I'm partisan. I just want everyone to do well, right? Because uh, you don't want all at your hours. It's, it's, it's sad to see when people mess it out, especially kung magandang potential. So that's it. Now let's go to the final part of our discussion for this episode 19, which is we have not been talking about a lot of other candidates, by the way. So hindi lang ito Lenny, Isko, Pacquiao. Well, Sarah is effectively out, which I've, I've been saying for some time. And BBM, of course, is the lead candidate and whether he's going to be disqualified or not, which obviously is not going to be disqualified. He got away with so much. He's not gonna. He's not gonna be held accountable now under this guy. Um, Caliodi and Doc Caliodi, Walden oh. Bellio. And of course, Doc Walden Bellio, you know, was my university mentor. So disclosure lang, no. So para people don't say, you know, 
So, you know, I, I've worked with him in the past when he was congressman also, because I worked before in, 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 in I advised senators and congressmen in the past, no? Uh, yung long time ago, no? Uh, so, meron din akong background sa government. So, hindi lang ako nagsasayang. I really worked in the government before. So, my government, I... So, you know. Now, going back to this issue, um, you know, some people are saying, if you really want a progressive, you know, like really Bernie Sanders-ish, then go with this. Because Caliodi is a labor union leader. By the way, uh, hindi ito mga makabayan block, ha? hindi sila makabayan block, right? So, so uh, nga, of course... Meron... Si Caliodi? So, I'm not... Kaliod is a labor union leader. Okay. So leader siya They're na mga... not connected with the Makabayan block. No, ano? no. They, I mean, they had, uh, I think in 2019, medyo nag uh, grand alliance sila with the other side, yung mga Makabayan people. But they're not Anong the same. Anong grupo si I forget the exact name, but I, the background I know is there, if, if I can use the term, they're center left. They're not left. They're center left, right? So they're like labor party. Kung okay. gagawin labor party in UK, or uh, SPD ng Germany, parang yun ang counterpart. I would say, not not even Bernie Sanders level, I would say center-left, no? Uh, habang yung Makabayan block is much more left, right? Much more left. And of course, according to the other side, they're, they're front for the other super left, right? Uh, of course, we're not saying that because this is red tagging era, we're not gonna go into that debate. <laughs> but but my point is, they're more center-left. Uh, Walden Bellio, from what I know, he used to be on the left before, but they, he, uh, he was part of the rejectionist. So I think he went to Akbayan later on, which is like closer to uh, the Leni camp, right? Uh, Reza Ontiveros. You know? And then later on, he also quit because of issue with Pinoy over um, uh, Mama Sapano. So he resigned from the Congress. See, person who resigns from the Congress, saan ka makahanap yan? No? So, <laughs> grabe tong taon to, di ba? And professor in New York, Berkeley, around the world. So kakaiba. So now he run for VP for Caliodi. So they're more like center-left. And I don't know if you saw it online, imagine like F word si, yeah, oh, oh. Yeah, si oh. Cab Walden, no? Walden, uh, kasi oh. daw, ni-rape daw yung bansa ng mga, mga gane, mga gane to. Tapos ngayon gusto nila mag-presidente ulit or something like that. So yeah, he that got gave into... Them some traction, ha? So uh, sure, sure. maybe you should do that. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but <laughs> it, it's just, it just put them <laughs> it on the map, the last right? Time, the last yeah. time na gumana yeah. siya in 2016, <laughs> the last guy na puro mura won the presidency. I'm just saying. <laughs> so actually, I'm saying if you're anti-Marcos, don't worry at all. There is not only Lenny and Pacquiao. Potentially, there's going to be Calio the, and in the VP, it's going to be uh, you know Dr. Bellio who are going to take very colorful language no, on, on the Marcoses and Dutertes and all. So, so I really look forward to the debates even more now, twice more. And actually, I interviewed ko si Calio di sa GMA before sa SONA, yung not this sauna, but the previous sauna. Uh, I, I oh, saw sorry, it. Uh, 2000. Yeah, intervene. Yeah, very, ano, diba? very steady. Very, ano, hindi yung pa-activista. Very, very steady. Very reasonable. Talagang TNL. Tunay na lalaki. Chill lang siya. Hey, meron siyang, yeah, I saw his proposals. Eh. I saw some, I read some of it. Right. Uh, he started with a 750 minimum wage. Right, so, right. Yung gusto niya simula doon. Tapos, uh, end talaga ng contractualization. Endo, yeah, yeah. Endo, abolish yeah. lahat ng employment agency. Yung, yung, uh, right. Mga mining agency, agencies. Mining agency. Yeah, yeah. agency yeah. Manpower yes, yes. agency. Where right. the contractualization happens. Right. And, uh, yun, talagang hardline, ano eh. Pero, yeah. pero, Tsaka uh, frontliners. Uh, increasing budget for frontliners sa DOH, DOH and uh, yung mga nasa, uh, yung mga tao, of course, in the medical sector. You know? So, hey, the policies are interesting to me. Very interesting. Very sound, some would say. And some would say it's a standard left, center left argument in any mature democracy. Unfortunately, in our countries, not yet there. Right? Medyo yeah, radical. I, I think ang, ang, ang main problem ni Caliodi, kasi ngayon ko lang nga din alaman after talking, na-associate pa rin siya, na-associate siya masyado sa makabayan block and of course right. sa super left nga na sinasabi natin and uh, right. pero yun nga ngayon ko lang nalaman na hindi pala na he's from a different no hindi group. hindi, hindi, oh. hindi but they, they, they have a kind of a unity I mean since all of us want change puti oh. nga sa kanila sila may unity team sila eh, na hindi nagawa nung mga alam mo na di ba um I think you know the the Lenny camp, the, especially the the liberal camp, should have learned from from the ability of Kaliot. Because pare yung left na pa faction faction din yan. Mas grabe pa yung mga awayan don, kasi ideological na eh, hindi lang oh. interes eh. Ideology. Kaya actually they're more prone to factionalism in the left than than in the center and others. 
So I, I, in fairness to Caliodi, I think he was able to find some sort of common ground. So, so, you know, he may not be as prominent yet, but he has shown some leadership skills in a very difficult uh, they need to be, uh, kind they of a need landscape. To be social yeah. media more, eh? I think, I think, yeah, he's speaking up. He's speaking up, oh, but hopefully they can get there. I think uh, Dr. Bellio at least knows a little bit more about social media. So I think they can get more involved in this. Hopefully we can also interview them, no? And other candidates in the future. Meron, no? so, meron, ding, meron ding mga issue na lumalabas. I'm not sure lang. So I'm not saying din na totoo pero nalabas, Yeah, of course. Uh, We're discussing Cal- issues, Cal- no? Yeah. Cal- Yodi daw. Uh, is a uh, possible parang secret candidate ni Lenny. Parang may, uh-huh. kung, kung si kung si Bato yung kay BBM ito yung anti Bato oh may wingman din si Lenny si Caliodi kasi well, ganun din well, eh ganun din eh si whether uh, or not he's gonna do that because he's gonna really be the tough guy on Marcos and Duterte and all perhaps nga, eh. in, oh, in eh. a language that Lenny cannot do yeah yeah uh, yes tapos yung kay Isko din di ba last week uh he hit uh, hinit din niya si Isko dahil doon sa endo issue Kasi right. si Isko, he's not going to promise na he's going to bring uh, an end. Can to you clarify one. that? Kasi, kasi the, uh, sorry, I I, I want to give you a chance to clarify, not because you're a spokesman, but you know, uh, because you're more familiar with the thinking of Yorme. Kasi there are two ways to look at it. One is like, ah, he criticizes, ano, talaga, bayaran na oligarch to, kaya he's openly protecting the oligarch. The other one is like saying, wait, 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 I think what Yorme was saying is that habang grabe pa yung economy, unahin muna natin yung employment. And then slowly, I will see the legal issues around contractualization. But for now, people just need job and to survive, right? Because if we might push for some legal reforms, baka mag suffering employment prospect. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I, I'm hearing multiple interpretations here. Hmm, kasi that's the other side ng contractualization na hindi na hindi na pag-usapan eh. Na if companies are forced na uh, to hire just regular employees at uh, hindi na contractual, eh, ang tendency niya mas konti yung iya hire. mas maingat sila right. o mas maano sila sa sa yeah kasi syempre lahat ng mga hassle and ano pag regular na yung employee so uh, may ano din siya eh may pros and cons din eh so it brings niya, down flexibility i mean i don't agree with that yeah. argument i think I, i'm not saying i'm i don't agree with, i'm not saying i'm disagreeing with you but i don't i don't agree with that argument because it's very self serving for for but i never got the pocket how do they do it How do they do with no, the ibang bansa? Kaya nga may regulations eh. Kaya nga may regulations eh. Bawal talaga mga ganyan sa ibang bansa. You you ensure that may may security of tenure, no? Uh, may certain degree of health benefits, etc. So inayos na nila sa ibang bansa. But in those countries, malakas ang labor unions kasi. Uh, at meron sila mga leftist parties in power. SPD, Labor Party, even Democrat Party to a certain degree. Wala tayong ganun eh. So, uh, yung Liberal Party, hindi that's, naman. That's supposed to be uh, si yeah. Leodi kung mapalaki nila or Exactly. Because the left, makabayan. Liberal is not, Liberal Party is not left. They're actually right party by by normal, kumbaga, ang awayan talaga dito is on the right, center right, right, far right. Yan ang debate sa Philippines. So, Leodi and uh, Walden are honestly the only one who are left. And they're not left-left, they're center-left. Right, so so hindi tayo mga radical na komunista ganon. Just just to be clear about that, uh, based on comparative, no. So I compare myself. Maybe sa... there's a room for us na ganon. Na, na, We should start. We should oh, start somewhere. Yeah, na nahiwalay sa ano? Sa nahiwalay doon sa uh, mga liberal party. Nag, in, I mean, nag insurgency. mga nag, mga in, mga nag ah, yeah, yeah. yeah kasi yun ang that's yun but ang, isn't that what makabayan is supposed to be right kind of a political democratic uh, pero hindi sila ma, hindi they, they, mm. hindi sila mahiwalay doon eh they can di ba yeah. hindi sila ma-condemn associated na talaga oh, but that's oh, what yeah. akbayan is doing di ba yun yung ang point na yun, akbayan di ba yun maybe uh, 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 Rizal Antiveros Rizal Antiveros is oh. I think the example of what you're saying right oh. aktivista pero uh ni respeto niya yung ating saligang patas, democratic oh. process, etc. hindi yung rebelde, NPA, mga ganun style, di ba? So yeah, yeah that's man. interesting. All right, so let's end on this point, siguro. Uh, okay, on my part, please, Mark, if you have something to say, please. Yeah, oh, sorry. So, I mean, on a final note, dun din ako, uh, dun din ako nagtataka din, uh, na uh, we, we talked about yung uh, yung uh, party na for the laborers, for workers, sila right. Caliodi. Tapos may dalawang candidate na galing sa hirap. Si Isko, si Pacquiao. Diba? Parang sure. galing talaga sa mahirap yan. And it's Focus not Lenny about. came from rich too, no? I mean, hindi lang privilege. Oh, Lenny privilege. is... Oh. Talaga si Bongbong yung privilege background. Oh. Diba? Lenny is siguro middle, middle, or middle class or... Oh, pero, yeah, yun, pero, I mean... Yeah. Pero, middle yeah, class, I'm, not I'm even... Back, yeah. I'm going back to my point lang. Na merong gano'n. Pero uh, nagtataka din ako how come yung pinaka mahirap sa atin yung mga nasa kali 
yung mga nasa palengke, yung mga nagtatrabaho ng yung mga kumakayod ng why why would they choose someone na galing hmm. sa anak ng presidente, uh, mayaman, merong may mga gold bars over We like those... winners. Diba sinabi ni Lelo yan, gusto natin ng mga successful rich people Yun. also. Hindi, like over, Trump, di ba yung mga supporters ni Trump? Puro na, mga maraming no? mahirap Mano, yan. That's a great, that's a great ano, glamour, analogy. No? Glamour, more than, bro, more glamour. than someone na kasama nila. More than someone na Ito, who is like them or, or na umasenso Ito, lang. So that's very interesting lang. So, yeah. Even Duterte, anak siya ng governor. Hindi siya tagaling sa mahirap. So let's just be clear. BMW yung nga yung nata yung bahit nga. But Isko came really from the poverty. Uh, also, you know, from... from the slums Pacquiao also and and, and Lenny Robred talagang probinsyano na talagang middle class ordinaryo lang I mean even if mayor suggests noon kita mo naman yung lifestyle nila di ba yung Tamaraw FX yata yung car nila yung mga, I mean no offense I'm just saying like they're not pre, they're not even upper middle class they're like barely middle class no all right sige uh, any final points uh, we wrap up episode 19 because we have an upcoming episode guys we're going to have a guest and our guest She will discuss Philippines, Brazil, New York because she has all of that background. We have all of that in one person uh, in Dr. Cecilia Lera. We're going to uh, have our discussion next with her in our episode 20. I hope na enjoy niyo ito kasi for a while, puro mga interviews lang kami. So ito kami naman yung nagchismisan kami dalawa. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you so much, Mark. I actually, I really enjoyed our discussions now. Medyo melo tayo, di ba? Hindi ako masyadong overexcited. Sorry. So I'm beginning to learn. At no kasi, medyo late night kami at saka minsan nagkakape ako. And uh, and naglalag din kasi internet unfortunately sometimes. So uh, hindi ko alam kung patapos na or nagsimula na. So that, that's why pasensya na ha. So this is it. Episode 19 Project Pilipinas. Maraming salamat. Please catch also our next episode. Episode 20 will discuss populism, Bolsonaro, Brazil, Philippines, Trump and everything in between. Maraming salamat. Project Pilipinas. God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye.